So we are here at Floor Farms, and we're going to learn how to make tamales. Let's go. My name is Kaya, and I'm going to be your farm hostess. I'm here if you need assistance uh, with your salsa, with your tamales. Also, if you need any drinks from the bar or some water from here, please let me know. Our chef today is going to be Eddie. Yes, Eddie. morning. Okay, Ellie's gonna teach you some really nice recipes with some uh, amazing cooking techniques with the help of our uh, salsa and tamales queen. Remedios. Hola, bienvenida. Hola. This is Remedios. Bienvenida. You know, you have to pay a lot of attention to Remedios because she has this talent that she makes things look easy when they are actually not that easy. And also today to help us in the class, we have Mirna right here on the side. Hola. Mirna, it's also right here if you need assistance with your salsa or with your tamales or also if you need some water. And uh, well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do today. First, we're going to start by learning the process to make our masa. Okay, then we're going to make our tamales and we're going to leave them on a steamer. And after this, we're going to go on a farm tour. The tour is going to be walking around the property. We're going to learn a little bit about the farm and also some of our gardening. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to get a signature cocktail that is a farmarita. We're going to start by washing our hands. We're going to go over there to the washing hand station with the remedios. And then we're going to meet you over there in the tamales station. So these are different types of waters. This is hibiscus. This is lemon, lime. Ginger. Ginger. Yes. Talking about the nixtamal. Okay. Um, I'm telling you, this is the basis of almost all of our food because with this you cannot only make tamales. You can make a lot of different things. You can also make tortillas. You can make tostadas, playudas, sopes, guaraches, quesadillas, enchiladas, flautas, playudas, atole. A lot of different things. And uh, it's super important in Mexico. Today we are using white corn. There is also blue corn and yellow corn right here in Mexico. And the use of the corn is very different depending on where you go. For example, right here on this area, the more common one is the white one. I'm going to give you this so you can pass it around and you can feel the texture of our nixtamal. And then I'm going to tell you the process from the corn to get this, okay? We're not going to use this. This is just for demonstration. And if you can pass it around. Okay, so what we're gonna do first uh, before we get to this, we're gonna wash the corn, then we're gonna simmer the corn with cal, and uh, it's a calcium hydroxide, it's a powder delivered from the limestone. We're gonna do it for 45 minutes, then after this, we're gonna let it rest on that water for about uh, eight hours because we need it to cool down. And then after this, we're gonna drain the water and wash the nixtamal again two or three times until the water is clear. And we're gonna drain the water and uh, let it be like this, okay? We're gonna let it dry a little bit and this is what we have. It's a long process, I know. <laughs> we also recommend you to go to your nearest tortilla store and get the masa already pre-made. You can ask for an extamal masa. But this is just so you can have an idea of what it is going from the corn to our masa. That is a molcajete. <laughs> but it's, it's, yes, it's very similar to the, to the molcajete, but you know our molcajete is a bowl. And the, and the metate, it's flat, and it's made of volcanic rock. So it has another tool that is a round tool. They put the nixtamal on the rock, and then they grind it manually. But um, as I was telling you today, we're um, on another century, so we're going to use this tool. Remedios is going to show us how to grind our masa. The masa that we're going to have, it's perfect for our tamales, OK? It's not the same for the, for the tortillas. For the tortillas, it's a longer process. OK, vamos a poner el nixamal en esta parte del molino. Este pie lo ponemos arriba, con esta mano agarramos y con esta trabajamos. ¿Quieres ayudarme? Someone wants to help Remedios? Okay, left leg hand and left foot over here. On the top. I told you, don't believe Remedios if it looks easy, okay? Rapido! Gosh, the party, you're weak. You're weak. 
Someone else? So you can feel the texture of the masa and also the smell of the nixtamal that is very particular. You can pass it around. And as I was telling you for what we're gonna do today that is our tamales, this masa is perfect. For tortillas, the masa needs to be super fine. Okay, so you need to adjust the grinder and process the masa two or three more times to the grinder. Okay? Okay. We are lucky enough to have Remedios because she pre-made the masa for us this morning. <laughs> We're gonna start adding our dry ingredients first. So Reme, what are we gonna add? Okay, vamos a poner sal. We're gonna add some salt. We're gonna, uh, as I was telling you, add the dry ingredients first. Royal, and then some baking powder. Baking powder. Okay, Remedios like to use her hand to mix the ingredients because that way she makes sure all of the ingredients get mixed perfectly together. She like it or have food restrictions. So instead of the lard, we're gonna replace it with a little bit of butter. We fuck it. So, yeah, just a little bit of water. Okay, you can make a as many kinds of uh, tamales as you want, different feelings, but there's no way of making a low carb tamal, okay? This is the zero calorie version. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the healthy version. And well, as I was telling you, all over Mexico, everywhere you go, tamales are gonna be different. The ones that you try right here in Los Cabos are not going to be the same that you try in Mexico City or in Chiapas or in somewhere somewhere else. And uh, even right here on the farm we have our own recipe. We're going to add some color to our masa and also we're going to give a crunchy feeling to our to our masa too. Okay? Remedios, it's a it's a mixing the the ingredients, but see how she has a technique that she's um that she's like uh, infusing some air into the masa so that way we are have a more fluffy masa. Hey, you know, like, uh, tamal de elote? Yes. No. Um, no. No, no, it's different. No, it's muy different. Yeah, it's very different. tamal de elote solo es el, solo el, el, el elote. Muy... Sí. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have egg. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, right now we're going to add some cilantro. So I want to ask again, everyone it's okay with cilantro. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, because now it's too late. You're gonna them with the cilantro. No, no. The, and also uh, about the butter. This is unsalted butter, and the butter needs to be at room temperature. Please don't heat the butter and then add it to the masa because when you cook the tamales, uh, the masa is gonna separate from the from the fat. Okay, and we don't want that kind of thing. So always like this. Okay, so uh, Remedios, he says the masa is a little bit hard to work, a little bit dry. Uh, the moist and the dry can be uh, changing a lot depending on many things, special, especially in the caution of the cup. So today she feels the masa a little bit hot, a little bit dry, so we can add some liquid on it. Today we're going to make chicken and vegetarian tamales. So we have two different types of stock or liquid. This is the chicken stock for the chicken tamales, and we also make some vegetarian stock for the veggie tamales. This is just to back the moist on the masa, to don't keep like dry tamales. And also about the feeling of the day. Today we have two different feelings, three different feelings right now. Uh, the regular feeling we use for the tamales, the chicken one is this one. This is our uh, recipe for the tamales, chicken tamales. For this recipe, we start cooking in the morning some chicken under boiling water with some herbs, veggies, salt and pepper to can get the shredded chicken and the chicken stock. Then for the peeling, we start cooking in the paint some veggies. Today we use uh, celery, carrot, onion, chop. Then we add some serrano chili peppers and garlic, finely chopped with some butter. Then we add the shredded chicken, bay leaf, pine, chili powder, uh, salt, pepper, the same sweet popcorn we use it on the masa, and we let cook and mix all together for like 5 10 minutes. Then after that, we like to let uh, cook a little bit more in low heat with some chicken stock on it to don't keep like dry feeling. So I recommend to never use over dry feeling or over dry masa to don't keep dry tamales at the end. The feeling you can you will try it in the station. I really recommend to try it with the tortilla chips. It's really good. Just please don't eat all the feeling before to be done with the tamales. We have a lot of feeling today, but make sure to don't 
it all the feeling they have to be done with your tamales. And also today we make some uh, rajas poblano, we call it here in Mexico. It's a sharp poblano chili pepper. So we grill on the, we uh, burn it in the grill, all the skin, then we uh, remove all the skin. We clean all the inside part, then we slice it. Then we cook it with some onion, a little bit of garlic and some sweet corn on the paint with some butter and cream. We really love to give you to try the masa right now, so you can, I can feel the flavor, the texture. I really love to compare with the cookie dude. Of course, not gonna be uh, sweet, gonna be salty. All of you are okay with uh, chicken, right? No, I'm fine. <laughs> chicken? Chicken? This is how we're gonna wrap our tamales, and this is one of the most important parts. Okay, pay attention. Okay. Remedios, it's very quick, but we're gonna try to make it slow. <laughs> and well, today we're gonna uh, wrap our tamales in foreign husk. How you find this? You're gonna find them in the store, but they are dry. And a dry husk is really hard to manipulate. So we need to soak them in water for about 20 minutes, water with water. And uh, that way the, the husk is gonna be easier to manipulate. So Remedios is looking for the perfect foreign husk to make one tamal. <laughs> she has it already. Can you give Remedios some space here, please? <laughs> and well, this is a perfect corn husk for a tamal, okay? Okay. Esta tiene dos partes, una más lisa y una más... Okay, one part of the husk is uh, softer than the other, you know, smoother. Okay. Vamos a we're tomar gonna use the masa in the smooth side. Vamos a tomar una medida de este. Uh -huh. este that is a perfect amount for a tamal. We're gonna put it in the middle. Lo ponemos okay. justo en el centro. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vamos y vamos a hacer un hoyito con nuestros dedos. We're gonna make a space on the masa so we can put our filling. See how like a bird's nest right here. Okay, para que nos quede de esta manera. This is a really important step. If you want to come here a bit closer, I will say. Okay, vamos a poner pollo. We're gonna put one, two spoons, two little spoons of the of the filling in the middle. Okay, vamos a hacer presión al pollo. Then we're gonna press it into the masa. But see how Remedios is leaving the edges clean of the, the masa? Okay. Because, because that is gonna help us when we close the tamal. La ponemos en la mesa y vamos a poner nuestras manos de esta manera. Vamos a cerrar muy suavemente. Okay, we need to close uh, softly. Don't press too hard, it's not a burrito. Then it's gonna be really hard to open the, the, the husk again. Y nos va a quedar de esta manera. See, like she hides the chicken filling. Okay. Ahora vamos a tomar la hoja de este lado y vamos a doblarla igual muy suave, no vamos a hacer presión. Okay, now we're gonna uh, fold it from the top and the bottom. De la misma manera, cerramos del otro lado. Tomamos estas partes. And then we're going to close from the sides. Sí, then we have a tamal. Tenemos. Ok, vamos a tomar dos pedacitos de una hoja. Now, since, well, we have different kinds of tamales right here, and uh, we're going to tie them so we know what kind of tamales we have. And also, so that it's going to prevent the masa coming out of the tamal. La amarramos de esta manera. We're going to get two pieces of the corn husk, and we're going to tie them together. For the chicken filling, you're going to uh, just add one. Okay? We're going to make like a little tamal gift right here. Okay. 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 Stay! That one is good. Uh, this one, oh, no, that nice. one you don't have to patch it because it's on the side, you know, okay. it's when it's like uh, on the knee. Okay. Well, we go. also have some chicken in this side. We have more chicken in this side. Is that good? Is that perfect? Yes, that is a good side. Just don't go to big the masa 
We're about to not add too much filling. We want to try to keep the filling trapping in the middle of the masa. You're gonna add all this masa for one tamal. Yeah, masa perfect for two tamales. So I put my masa on the corn and I made my little bird nest like that. Tamala challenge. Now let's get some chickens. Remember, always put two scoops, so it's enough. You can have that little plate, you know what I mean? Like this. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's so hard and it's hard. Just follow me, okay? Just follow me. Okay. Put your hands at the bottom. Hands at the bottom. Then just go like this. Slow your hands. Very ah. Very gentle. Yes, it honestly it kind of looks like a taco, a mini masa taco. Oh wow, that was, that was good. No, please, stay together. I, I'm being surprised. Two scoops. Gentle. Oh yeah. We're going slow. No, stay inside. Stay together. Please. Oh gosh. Yes, yes, we do it. No, no. This is why I shouldn't yeah. tie in tamale. Alright, this is Thank you. Like that. Like that. Tiny tamales. I guess. Put your tamales right here. Oh, oh no. Tiny. Just yeah. step on up. So I have six, six tamales in my little pan. Seven. Why? I mean, why is dropping the tamales in my pan? And this is one of the smaller tamaleras there are in Mexico. The bigger one is for 600 tamales, so that is like a liter jacuzzi. Right here in Mexico, we have big families. You know, a small family will be a family of 50 people. So sometimes we have to make more than a thousand tamales at a time. Well, right here in the tamalera, we have a molcajete. If you don't know what a molcajete is, we have one over there in the chef's uh, spot. It's that piece of rock that is over there, and we're gonna talk about that later because we're gonna use it. But right here on the tamalera, we have the molcajete because we use it as a base. On the top, if you want, you are welcome to look. Just be careful because this is a... What? <laughs> so right here we have a base and the base has some holes in it. Because we're going to cook the tamales with steam. We have a water almost up to this line. And as I was telling you, they're going to be cooking with steam. Right here we have boiling water and the water can come out of those holes and get into our tamales. Those tamales are going to be still good, but we don't want that texture. So what we're going to do, we're going to add some uh, husk also and we're going to put like a small, like a layer, a bed of uh, corn husk on the bottom. Okay, then after this we're going to put our tamales on the top. <laughs> we're going to put... Can I just dump them? Okay, Remedios is going to put the tamales on the tamalera. She's not gonna throw the tamales. We try to feed as many tamales as we as we can. Now we're gonna make salsa. A big garlic, chili peppers, and tomatillo. So first we're gonna talk about the chili pepper we're gonna use for this salsa. In Mexico we call it chili de arbol. Chili de arbol means chili from the tree. But if you go to the store in Mexico and don't ask for chili from the tree, we don't gonna understand you. Ask for chili de arbol. Chili de arbol is a dry and spicy chili pepper. Today we toast it in the pan in really low heat for like 10-15 minutes. And the idea is like turn it a bit brown and really dry, like really crunchy. When it's feeling a little, uh, really dry and it's feeling a bit brown, it's time to remove it from the fire and gonna be ready to use. I told you this chili pepper is really spicy. If you cook it at home, I recommend to open really well the windows. Don't do that in the closed place. Well, this chili pepper always gonna be releasing a really spicy smoker room. Don't cook it in your oven, you will get a really bad surprise opening the door. You will not like it. 
Come. Then we're gonna use some roasted garlic. We roll this, the garlic in the same pan in medium to high heat. We like to let cook in the husk. So we take the garlic cloves one by one, we put it in the pan. When the garlic cloves is starting to feel some soft and the skin is starting to burn, it's time to remove it from the fire. You can peel it and you're gonna keep them like that, ready to use. In this recipe, we don't use any type of fat, no oil, nothing like that. All gonna be like pretty natural. The last ingredient gonna be the tomatillo. We have some in this side, I can find some if you want to check it, if you want to feel it. The tomatillo, some people like to call it the green tomato. But this is not the tomato. This is tomatillo, totally different than the tomato. It's from the same family, but it's not the same fruit. For example, the tomatillo never gonna, gonna turn red. This is not a unripe tomato. The tomato, it's always coming with a dry earth in the outside and always gonna be some wax. In the morning, we wash the tomato with a lot of water, we remove the husk, and we remove some part of the waxy to keep them ready to use. The, <clears throat> the tomato is the base of all the green salsas we make in the Mexican kitchen. You can use it raw, can be boiled, can be fried, can be shot, can be boiled in the oven. We have many ways to use it. You can cook it in the grill, in the casserole. But today we're gonna use it boiled. We have the tomatillo already boiled in this side for your salsa. So we start in, boil, in cold water, we bring to boil, and when the, the water is starting to boil, we check the feeling of the tomatillo. When your tomatillo is feeling some soft like that, it's time to remove it from the water and you can pass it on the plate and let, let it sit down in the plate. The juice, like the water you can see in this bowl, is the juice releasing by the tomatillo. 100% tomatillo in this bowl. We don't use the water of the cocktail for this salsa, only to cook the tomatillo. Because the water don't gonna add any flavors in your salsa. We don't add uh, no salt, no chili pepper, no herbs, nothing else than the tomatillo on the water. Just to cook it. You see, in this salsa, we like to use a recipe of three chili peppers, three garlic cloves, and the tomatillo, depending the size, can be two, three, or four. Three chili peppers are gonna make this salsa real spicy. Do you like spicy? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Now, if you like spicy and if you know this chili pepper, you can use a three chili peppers with no problem. If you have care with the spicy, I recommend to use less chili pepper with two gonna be still spicy. This one gonna turn some mild. If you love spicy, if you want one, two more chili peppers, we can do it. <laughs> but also we have another option. Uh, we have remedio. Remedio is a little bit crazy with the spicy and remedio is always gonna make your salsa really spicy. So in case you start with one, you are also the three chili peppers and you want to have the spicy at the end, we can give you to take the we can give you the option to take a spoon of remedio salsa to mix in your salsa to have the spice. For remedio today she's gonna use more than the three chili peppers. So look, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Okay. Okay, so we have around 20. We're gonna need uh, a few more because it's not spicy. So this is we have like around 20, 22 in this one. Okay, vamos a tomar el tequila. De esta manera y la parte grande. Okay, just uh, sorry guys. I know the weather is very hot today, but we need to talk of the thing, the time for the chili peppers to can be flying in the class and we will not like it. Okay. I've talked about the garlic and we, we when we're gonna smell the garlic, we're gonna turn on the thing. Okay, y vamos a moler. So you can look all remedios, she moved the rock. So it's gonna be like always pressing down and moving, uh, feeling like the scratch. And in the front and the back, or in circle, look pretty metal. But the idea, like, turn all the chili peppers on top. If you can crush, also the seeds gonna be much better. Then after that, we're gonna add the garlic and we're gonna smash the garlic with the chili peppers and making a paste. We don't want to leave like big pieces of garlic or uh, chili peppers in your salsa. The tomato can be some chunky if you want. We're gonna try to be quick with the chili pepper, so we're gonna count on the thing on the thing on back. Okay, I'm gonna be passing around. Just let me know how many chili peppers do you want. Three. Sure. And this. Two. Amigos. Two. Dos. Amigo. And two. Dos. Two. Same. <laughs> 
cuatro. Well, maybe we eat because we have orientation in school. So I have two peppers in my uh, salsa and Carter had two, so we have four. That was pretty spicy, but I'm going to try 22. Like the salsa? Spicy? See, I chose a tiny chip. This is 22. Exactly. Yeah, for take a little bit to try first. If you like it, you can take a little bit. Like it? Spicy? Oh my god, that was... Somebody else want to try the spicy uh, remedio salsa? It's hot, like so okay. spicy. 22, oh my god. You like gosh. it? You can just mash avocado. A mash oh. avocado can do guacamole. Today we're gonna show you one of the favorite recipes of guacamole we have here in the farm. We call it the rosemary guacamole because the bay is gonna be the rosemary. And so we're gonna add some chili serrano and some garlic. All those ingredients are gonna be raw and fresh. The rosemary is not really uh, common in the Mexican kitchen. Not too much people use it, less in the guacamole. But we find the way to use it in the guacamole was like six years ago. We were trying to make a new recipe with some eggplant in the garden. And one day we try it in this way with all those ingredients. And we really love the fragrance and the flavors we're using on this guacamole. And most of the time the guests in the class really love it. So today we're gonna make two good sized guacamole. Uh, we have a lot of people, so we're gonna use I think so like six uh, avocados per recipe. It can be five, six, seven, depending on the size. For six um, good size avocado, we're gonna use a medium to good size garlic cloth. It's gonna be like this size garlic cloth. I recommend to be careful to don't add too much garlic because the garlic is really strong flavors. If you don't want to take over all the recipe, I recommend to use a medium to good size but don't overpass with the garlic. The serrano, the same way of the garlic, we don't want to overpass with the spicy. Because if you have too much spicy, you're probably going to take over all the rest of the ingredients. So before to use the serrano, I recommend to check the spicy on it. To know how spicy is your chili peppers, I recommend to smell the inside part. So you can cut it and smell it. Woo! It's spicy today. I get some in the morning and I smell the scent. Spicy. So I'm gonna check the next one because the chili pepper don't have always the same spicy. If you have a not really spicy one, you can use a whole serrano. If you have a really spicy one, I recommend to use less. I like this one. So today we're gonna use a half serrano per recipe, medium to small size. Should be perfect. So the, this. So the spicy new chili pepper is always gonna be many strong. One girl gonna be smelling you see the peppers inside, spice are gonna be. It's very really obvious. You can make the taste at home, it's working very well with the serrano and also the jalapeno. And the day you're gonna have a really spicy one, you're gonna know it. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be like burning your mouth. Like this one. Okay. And the rosemary we're gonna use only the leaves, so we're gonna take the little uh, springs of rosemary and we're gonna uh, clean it in this way. Depending the size. 
of the springs, you can use layer some more. Today we have made them to small size springs. So I think so we can use like around five per recipe. Then the next step is a bit hard, so we, because we want to smash all those ingredients and turn them into a paste. The rosemary and the serrana are not really easy to smash, but today I have the strong uh, Remy in my side and she can help me with the hard one. <laughs> you know in Mexico the girls are stronger, stronger than the men, because they make the hard work in the kitchen. The mocaquete, the grains, so don't mess with the Mexican girl, especially with the men. <laughs> 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 okay, Remedio, uh, she's teaching you like the amount of each ingredient we have for like six good size avocados. This is like for a good size recipe. Then we're gonna add avocado. So, first, I will show you how to open avocado safe. To be safe, I recommend to be really careful. I like, have so many bad things in the kitchen, people really busy, trying to open avocado really fast, find the wrong way, and do really, really bad injuries. We call it the avocado heads. If you want to be safe, I recommend to don't move the knife, take the ripe avocado in the other hand, then slowly, you can roll the avocado in the shape of the knife. Never over pressing your avocado. Sometimes the avocado pit can be really small or really soft, so to don't get any bad surprise, be slowly and gently, okay? And then you can release a knife to be safe. Twist the avocado and open your avocado. To remove the pit, most of the time I do that in my hand. I'm a professional, I have some practice. For you guys at home, I recommend to use better the cleaning board than your hand to be safe. You can take the avocado pit in this way, Twist and Never try to take the pit with your hand, but yeah, like never put your hand in the front of the shop of the knife. To be safe, I really love the way to just twist it in the filling bowl. Also, I like the way to twist it in the bowl and this is a little bit more faster for me. Some people like to be a little bit more aggressive in the kitchen. That's the last technique. It's, it's not my favorite technique, but some people like to do that. I will show you. If you want to try this technique at home, just be careful to not hit anybody. Can you move it a bit in the side, ladies, please? Okay. <laughs> a bit more. Okay. Are you ready? Yes? Voila! If you do that at home, be careful to not have any children running around. Are you chicken? <laughs> no also, amigos, I don't know if we told you about that in the morning, but at the end of the day, after the class, we're gonna give you a little recipe book. So we, you will get all the recipes of the day, uh, including the recipe book. You're gonna have the parnarita recipe and all the stuff of the lunch. The surprise dish are gonna be on it also, the tamales, the peeling, the masa, everything. get this juice we cook two cups of dry ibis juice lightly covered with some water on the top and we let boil for like five ten minutes when we see the juice reducing and turning a bit thicker it's time to turn off the fire you can let sit the juice for a few more minutes then you can drain the juice and before to add the juice in the cream you need to let, let it cook the cream is good and it's our cream then we're gonna add a splash of lime and a little bit of salt and pepper Sometimes the people think the hibiscus is sweet for the color, but the hibiscus is non-sweet. It's really strong, tough flavors. It's always some sour and some uh, acid, but non-sweet. The water we have in the back is adding with some sugar, for this reason it's tasting some sweet, but this one we're gonna use it in the salty side, like a salsa. So we don't gonna add any sugar on it. Is 
that sour cream? Sour cream. Yeah. And soda biscuits have a lot of good properties. Mm -hmm. I like to compare with the cranberry. Sometimes I like to call it the Mexican cranberry. It's a big antioxidant, also a big diuretic, uh, antiseptic. Have a lot of good properties. Just a splash of lime, not too much. We're gonna add like two pinches of sun. Right now we're gonna give you a little cup of cream for its warp. You're gonna dry it in your, dry it in your station. And we're gonna leave all the rest of the cream in the eye. So if you need more cream at any moment for the lunch, for example, let us know this. A lot of the time the people make the connection of Caesar, Rome, Italy, but totally, totally wrong and you're right. <laughs> you know a little bit about the story of this recipe or not? Well, a little bit. Yeah. Let me talk to you about that. Don't, don't spoil it. <laughs> uh, yes, was spread in Tijuana, Baja California Norte, Mexico. Uh, was in the 20s, right? And was a famous uh, guest asking for some salad a la carte in the restaurant of the Cesar Hotel in Tijuana, for that's the name of the dish for the place. Also, the owner was Cesar Cardini, uh, an Italian living in Mexico. I forgot the name of the place and the name of the dish. The chef this day did not have the ingredient to make the salad a la carte and he's starting to make a spontaneous salad in front of the guests mixing all the ingredients finding in the kitchen eggs, lime, anchovies, parmesan cheese, garlic, Worcestershire sauce, mortal, uh, olive oil, crotons, lettuce and he make one of the more famous salad and dressing in all the world you can travel in all the parts of the world and everybody knows the sauce, it's not awesome. For this reason, we like to show you this recipe in the farm and also gonna come and really well in the side of your tamales for the lunch. So today I'm ready to make a good size recipe for like uh, over 18, 20 people. For this recipe, I'm gonna use three eggs, only the yolks, one and a half lime, only the juice. Then I'm gonna mix all those ingredients. Then we're gonna add all this oil to make the emulsion for the dressing. We're gonna use one and a half cup. And at the end, we're gonna add the shredded prime essences. For this recipe, we're gonna start mixing the yolks with the lime juice. That's a really important step to start this recipe. So the lime is gonna help to cook a little bit the yolks. So you're not gonna keep like raw eggs in your dress. Put the ceviche because it's Mexico, uh, the really traditional way to make the ceviche is cooking the fish or the shrimp with the lime juice. So the same acidity of the lime can put any uh, raw protein in contact with the lime juice. Yeah, also, if you put some chicken or meat, raw meat in contact with the lime juice, it's going to be good. Yeah. So if you start to mix the yolks with the lime, it's going to be really great to cook a little bit the yolks. You like to cook this? Yeah. Do you cook a lot, lot of fun? avoid all the white because the white part is gonna add a, like a, a, a hard strong flavors of eggs only the yolks the lime we're gonna add it slowly and when you add, you add the lime on the yolks it's really important to move it some fast Because if you don't move it some fast, you're gonna probably overcook the yolks with the lime and can turn into a crumbled egg, making like pieces of yolks in your dress. Are you okay with this dressing? For the vegetarian? For you? I'm 
Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese. We can make some with no parmesan okay. cheese if you want. Sure. Okay. You want it with no parmesan cheese? Maybe parmesan cheese. That's possible. For the for the younger ladies, it's okay. Yeah, we're all fine. If some of you don't need, don't like it. Let me know. We can send a little seasonal salad from the restaurant. It's no problem. And so we're gonna use only half part of all the lime at the beginning, right now, and we're gonna add all the rest of the lime at the very end of the recipe. It's all about to uh, get the, the texture of the dressing a bit more thin than thick. You will see. Okay, that's perfect for the base. Also in my uh, base of all the dressing, I like to start adding a little bit of salt and pepper at the beginning. In this one, we can add a big pinch of black pepper. But about the salt, I recommend to be really careful. Because we have really salted ingredients, the Worcestershire, the Worcestershire uh, anchovies, and also the parmesan cheese. So if you want to add some salt at home, you can do it, but be careful. And in my case, I know my recipe and don't really need salt. Then we're gonna mix all those ingredients. Barbecue sauce, garlic, anchovies, and the pasta. Then we're gonna start the emulsion adding the oil. So the oil, it's important to add, add it slowly without stopping whisk. Because if you add too much oil at the same time, or if you stop to whisk adding the oil, you're gonna cut the dressing. We call cut when we separate the fat and the rest of the ingredients. Today I'm working with a fork and a spoon. See, like for the show, I come if you want to use a big whisk, it's working really well. And traditionally, this recipe is making in a big wood bowl, breaking all the ingredients with a wood spoon, and making all the dressing in the same wood bowl, and making and mixing the layers in the same big wood bowl. I like this crystal bowl because everybody can look inside, and it's the perfect size when I make a big recipe like that. Then I'm gonna make the layers in a much bigger bowl. with the rest of the line and after that we're gonna add the parmesan cheese and you can look the dressing it's perfect consistent right now and with the parmesan cheese gonna be more perfect everybody like parmesan cheese right bless you And the parmesan cheese is gonna be like the same quantity of the olive oil. So we use one and a half, half one and a half cup of olive oil. So we're gonna use one and a half cup of parmesan cheese. And so I'm gonna add more parmesan cheese mixing the lettuce with the dressing, and I'm gonna add a little bit more parmesan cheese in the top of the salad. I love parmesan cheese. And the ladies and the dressing with the crotons. The crotons here we like to use a sourdough bread coming from the bakery. We cut it, we have the light cup of olive oil, parmesan cheese and garlic and we bake it. And if you want, before you uh, get back to your uh, lunch station for the lunch, I can give you a little, uh, like a little appetizer. Like a little taste of the dressing. You want it? Then you can 
Take a seat in your lunch station and wait for your lunch. Like it? Yeah. Ah, too late. <laughs> okay, so it's time to taste my tamales. <laughs> Don't eat it like this. I tried it once and it was a mistake. What's <laughs> it? Okay. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. What am I might turn out? Isn't that chicken? Okay. It tastes like the corn is very strong. And it has this creative, like, creamy flavor, you know? Chicken pops out like. Perfect. 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 This is one of my new favorite foods, not gonna lie. Mm. So good. So this is a mango tamale and this is ice cream. Yes. It's like very smooth. The ice cream is very smooth, cold, nice, refreshing. This mala is very sweet, smooth, and it has a lot of flavor and very fresh. And this is from the mango that they grow here all the time.